Let's turn our attention to our marriages and perhaps look for some real wisdom, biblical wisdom, and wisdom that will help us to grow together as a husband and wife. And someone who's been working on this just recently is Peter Sorkia. Peter is a former pastor, now Christian therapeutic life coach who leads Peter Empowering You. And Peter has come up with a blog title, which is a very interesting one, Hid in Agenda, talking about men and women. And the fact that the last time we spoke, Peter indicated that women tend to have more hidden agendas than men do. Let's talk about some tips to make your marriage really shine. Uh, Peter, a special welcome back to 2020. Thank you, Neil. Thank you for having me. Peter, let's talk about some marriage tips because sometimes we're just looking for little bits of wisdom. There's so much you can't deliver in just a short space of time. But if you're connected to another person by marriage, a man and a wife, uh, let's talk about you know how a woman is is reacting in that space and what her expectations are of her husband. What are your thoughts here? Look, I think that most women are wooed by their husbands pre wedding day and assume, maybe erroneously, that that's going to continue. Um, it doesn't seem to always continue. It seems that a lot of, well, some men will say, well, we got across the aisle. I loved you then. I love you now. What do you need anything else for? <laughs> <laughs> and so that's a little bit disappointing to the ladies because we love that romance. And look at Mills and Boone. Look at all the, the novels that women read. Look at the, um, the, the movies that you watch. There's always a love story. Why? Because women are watching them. They love love stories. And, and a woman wants to be in the centre of her love story until the end of her day. She doesn't want it to stop on the wedding day. It's a lifelong love story. And interesting to talk about a woman's side and her expectations that uh, that he'll continue to chase and be romantic and he yes. drops the ball there. There must be some ways she drops the ball too. Uh, some people might say she let herself go. Uh, that's one criticism. How do you think maybe on the other side, women can actually drop the ball here? Mm. I think that women might be very understanding of the maleness of their man, understanding there is some difference. There might be some knowledge there. And then afterwards, a woman does seem to think that a man can read her mind and what she doesn't realise is that he can't. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, that. Um, and so if he can't read her mind, what she thinks he needs to do, he's not doing, and so then she might tend to nag. Why do women nag? Generally because they're not getting what they want and they want to instruct their husbands. So there's two things there. One, they're nagging. Two, they're instructing. And that's not going to go down well with a male. And when she's telling him his, short, his shortfallings here or he's telling her her shortfallings, uh, that doesn't necessarily lead to harmoniousness, does it? So where do you get the insight? Where do you get the advice that's actually going to help your marriage get onto a better footing in this area? Mm, well, there's lots of organisations Christian organisations, particularly I'm thinking of Focus on the Family, that put out lots of resources for the family and for marriages. So there's, and that's on vision. You can hear that on vision. Um, I've put out some little uh, pointers, some, some tips in my blog so people can have a look at those. And there's one tip that was given to me. We were about oh, 15 years down the track in our marriage and we didn't have time and my husband didn't have the inclination to do marriage courses. But through another friend, I knew some people who were running marriage courses all around the country and were supervising others. So we got the pick of the, the cream, the cream of the crop, you know, in people. And so I asked them, what's the one thing that really would make a difference if we haven't got time to do these courses? And so the, the wife told me this and so we implemented it and it did change things. And that is, Neil, have a weekly date. A weekly date. And it, it's not a duty. It's actually something that enhances romance for both sides, doesn't it? Sometimes you start to 
uh, put dates in the diary and it's like another appointment for work. But you've got to treat it a little differently, haven't you? Neil, it doesn't matter how it happens. <laughs> <laughs> you put the date in the diary and it feels like it's contrived. It doesn't matter. The, what does matter is that you're both there, you both show up and you both take that time, utilise it wisely and show some interest in your spouse. So how you arrive at it, it's, it's not a big deal. But the big deal is being there and really uh, being there for your spouse. Yeah. Uh, some people say, and we might just dwell on this for a moment, some people say, uh, well, we can't afford right now. Cost of living increases, we can't afford to go out on a lavish date. Mm. Uh, how lavish does the date need to be? Can you do things paired back in a very simple way? Yeah, well, date doesn't mean going out. <laughs> it, it does sound like that, but it doesn't mean that. When we started this, our kids were little, so we couldn't afford to go out. We didn't, we'd have to get babysitters. It becomes a big production. So we just found a time in our week that we were both available in terms of not working, and we would put play school, wonderful program, wonderful babysitter, <laughs> put play school on, told the kids if there was a fire or a flood, they were able to come knock on the door, but otherwise no. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh -huh. um, we just had a date in the bedroom. So we just spent that a couple of hours every week. Now, the date could be once the kids have gone to bed. Whenever it is, you can find a time that works for you and make sure it works for the kids and then do it. And look, you can, can then progress to going out. Um, and maybe once a month you go out and maybe three out of four you stay at home. doesn't matter as long as there's something regular and it's for the two of you and it doesn't involve anyone or anything else. Just the two of you. And would you write down your plans? Would you write down some things you'd been talking about so you can continue on that conversation each week? Or is it a fresh conversation, do you think, every time you have a date? Um, I think if you're structured like me, you might make some notes. Yep. <laughs> if you're unstructured like my husband, you don't take the notes in. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, so you could, look, there's a whole lot of different ways of approaching this. It could just be, you could be guided by what's happened during the week and discuss, just have a chat. Um, you can uh, do different things. Um, you can watch podcasts about marriage and discuss them. Um, you can watch podcasts about anything and discuss them, about faith. It, it's anything that you two as a couple want to do together. Um, it could be a time of intimacy. Again, you know, get the kids busy and lock the door. <laughs> but whatever the time, whatever it is, use the time and that you both uh, that you're both interested in, you both want to do. So it's not just one wants to do this and the other. No, no, both be involved in whatever that time is going to, um, however it's going to be used. I can hear a few brains rattling and saying, <laughs> if we had this each week, uh, it might end up in an argument. Oh, yeah. uh, what are your thoughts for preparing yourself for your regular weekly date so that it doesn't turn into an assessment about where the finances are or your shortfallings versus my shortfallings, um, the thought that maybe you have a listening ear rather than bringing an agenda to the weekly catch-up. What are your thoughts here? Mm. Okay, so when we communicate with another person, there is listening and there is hearing and there is talking. So we are sending a message and we are receiving a message. When we send a message... We often then look at the face, look at the response, hear the response, and we're forming our next response. Now, there's a problem in that, and that is that we are forming what we want to say. Are we really hearing? Are we really listening? Is it just a, a physical thing or is it a, a heart thing, a mind thing? So when we hear with empathy, it makes such a big difference. And this is part of the communication process of empathizing so you hear with empathy and you might reflect back so you're saying a b c um yeah i can see what what you mean by that this is perhaps how i see it so you are receiving the message giving some feedback that you get it and now adding to that that communication so in that date time you might spend some time just listening 
just really listening to your spouse. So you don't have to fill every moment with words. You can sit in silence. You can sit and think about what you're going to contribute to the conversation before actually opening your mouth. Sometimes uh, we've got our mouth open and a foot is in it. So uh, somehow or other saying the right things in the right moment and creating an atmosphere where you're going to have closeness and intimacy, that's going to be important. Mm, that's right. And look, there's a lot of different apps that you can find that are about dates and what you can talk about. Um, one app talks about, um, gives you some suggestions about what to ask your spouse. So yes, you can have peace and quiet and just quiet. You can pray, you, know, you can do lots of things. But you can also try to reconnect with your spouse the way that you connected before you were married. Now, before you were married, you were on the phone all the time, you were in each other's company all the time, you asked lots of questions, you knew what your spouse or spouse-to-be loved to eat, you know how they spent their time. As time goes on in marriage, we just get busy about the business of marriage and family and the children and the other uh, things that children need and do and families require. And so that real intellectual emotional intimacy tends to go by the wayside so reconnecting in dates can simply be reconnecting in that emotional intimacy so what's your favorite food these days i know that you're at lunchtime when you're at work you tend to eat a lot of such and such or what do you eat when you're at work at lunchtime just finding out about those normal day-to-day -day things that once upon a time would send you into a frenzy <laughs> if you didn't know everything about your spouse to be so it's really starting again at the friendship level. It's finding out who your spouse is because they've changed in 20 years. Maybe they loved salami pizzas 20 years ago. Maybe they hate them now. You know, find out about those things that you once knew about. And I imagine that the atmosphere you create is one of a sanctuary. So when that date time comes around, you're creating the opportunity that you both long for, uh, not one that someone either one of, the, not one that either of a husband or wife will actually dread. It's one of those things where you do, as I think you said, uh, you know, you make coffee or you cook your favourite meal together. You create a sanctuary for that meal. Uh, mm. You create a sanctuary for that time together. Mm, mm. That is important. When you start out, it may not feel like a sanctuary. It may feel very forced. It may even feel uncomfortable if you have been at loggerheads for some time. So it's, it's a good uh, ground rule, yes, to set up. Let's make this a safe place. Let's not be negative towards each other and let's try and be open to the other. So you might have a couple of ground rules, Neil, that you both agree to. Now... If you are doing too well in your marriage, here once again, you might need a third party to start to help you put those sorts of ground rules in, in and put them in. Because if if you're not happy with one another, you are going to bring your problems to that time and that's not going to help. And you've been blogging about some of these things uh, in a series called Hid in Agenda and talking about the differences between men and women and for listeners to connect directly with Peter Sorkia. Peter's a former pastor, now a Christian therapeutic life coach who leads Peter Empowering You. The website is peterempoweringyou.com and you can check out Peter's blogs there. She's written lots about tips for your marriage of recent times. She's also written a couple of books, Unfrazzle and Redazzle, as well as Inquisitive, a reflective journal finding meaning in the middle of your mess. You can also participate in a video course called Unstuck and Empowered. And the first unit for that one is free. So the website, peterempoweringyou.com. Peter Sokia, thank you so much for sharing your insights once again with us today on 2020. You're very welcome.